ADHD, or Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder. Am I talking to you? Am I talking to me? I got ADHD. It's about anything. It's about everything. It's ADHD. Welcome back to ADHD with me, Travis Mills. Very special Valentine's Day episode for you guys. Plus our first repeat guest on the podcast, my girlfriend, Madeline Petch, joins us. This time I'm your girlfriend. Yes. Okay. <laughs> All the time. All the time. Every time. Is that Every okay? Time. Yes. Yes. I love it. Okay. It I'm sounds very, like a fake relationship I'm now. I'm very lucky. <laughs> very lucky. <laughs> um, before the mics cut on, you said that I took the good one. What are you talking about? Headphones. How, what are the different, we have the because same exact headphones Well, on. actually, no, it's the position you're in. And I understand why you're in that seat because you are the host. The host chair? You're, this is the because host chair. You, because you're there, you get the headphones next to the little plug-in thing where I'm over here and they have to cross my body. You know yeah, you I mean? could just take them off and- No, because I did that last time and people tweeted at me saying they were on the wrong way. So <laughs> yeah, we're in the right. <laughs> I mean, I don't think they work any different if you flip it around. That's yeah, the beauty. Then I, I don't want to get bullied on Twitter, so I just wear them the right way. <laughs> if anyone bullies you, I'll kill them. So what's up? Ah. Um, I know you guys. Well, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, wow, that is a sick sweatshirt. Guess what? It can be yours. Go to uh, <laughs> fanjoy.co/adhd. Get your own. We got the sweatsuit too. We got phone cases. We got coffee mugs. The merch is here. Merch hit. It's official. Don't forget the sweatpants. Yeah, I know. I gave you are. By the way, you are the first person to have Woo! the entire sweatsuit. Do you have one? I, I, well, I have the sample. Yeah, I have this. You have one with printed. It, you, yours is the official one. Oh. I got the samples. Mine like are like kind of like the bootleg versions. They're like the tester kits. We going to do a photo shoot tonight? Yeah, for sure. Tight. Yeah, gonna, <laughs> <laughs> little Valentine's Day photo Valentine's shoot. Valentine's Day photo shoot. Ugh. By the merch. Ugh. Go get yours. Um, limited edition. Once they're gone, they're gone. Uh, I'm not remaking them in this colorway. So act fast. Um, I'm so happy to see you because you've been gone in Vancouver for like a week. And some change. Yeah, here's the fun thing. I got off the airplane three hours ago and he drags me to the podcast studio. Hey, let's be real. Um, we had planned to do this a while ago. You asked me yesterday, I think, actually. Yeah, that's a while ago. Okay. Um, let's talk about your flight because you texted me like, oh my God, I almost died. Okay. By the way, plane crashes have been a reoccurring theme on my podcast because when Zane was here, we watched a video uh, of this girl, Charlotte Lawrence, who got in two plane crashes and survived. I talked about it last week wait, on the wait, podcast. Wait, 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 wait. People get in plane crashes and like uh, the commercial plane? She was in a private plane. Oh, okay. Um, but yes, pe people do get in plane crashes on commercial planes. Yeah, but not that often. I know a songwriter who was on a commercial flight, the plane crashed and he survived. Obviously, because I still know him. You know what I know though, which is a very interesting st st statistic. statistic. That's like, you know when they say anemone in Finding Nemo, that's what I just felt like was <laughs> happening. My brain just shorted out. That happened to me the other, I was trying to say uh, subtle shade and I kept saying shuttle shade. I like that better. Some shuttle, shuttle shade. Shuttle, shuttle, shade. shuttle shade. It's a bus that you take uh, when you want to sip some tea. Literally sips tea. It's the shuttle shade. Hop on. So I heard this statistic that the more flights that you go on, the less likely you are to be in a plane crash, which is interesting oh. and true. I Googled afterwards because I go on a lot of flights every day, every day, every week. Damn. That's, that's crazy because you'd think it'd be the opposite. Right. And when I heard that, because I was like, you know, the more flights that I go on, the more likely I am to die on one. I said that to my mom oh my because God. I'm dramatic. <laughs> and then my mom was like, no, your dad actually told me this interesting fact and told me that. And then I Googled it and it is true. Wow. Because- As true as a statistic can be, obviously, but- Well, I guess you're just an experienced passenger at that point, right? So, so like, like, you, you know, know, I know, you know, I already know what she's going to say when she gives me the safety instructions, headphones in, fuck it. You know, everything to do while you're sitting there. <laughs> I mean, there I exclusively on that comfy fly flight. Air Canada. So I know exactly where the little cushions are that turn into, you need to make devices. the safety, you need to make the safety video for Air Canada. Air Canada needs to hit me up and give me a brand deal already because I give them <laughs> a lot of money. And then, yeah, it just pops up with you. And then like, you know, you could have like red colored safety masks instead of the yellow, you could have like red, uh, life jackets instead of the yellow. Great, I can be the face of safety and precautions on airplanes. Yes. That's amazing. And you could literally stand up on all your flights. You're going to have to stand up and demonstrate it for them. It's going to charge a little more. I think. Yeah, no, of course. It yeah. char you charge for a little sure. bit more. It's a premium, but you know, premium. you Every get time like, I'm on <laughs> no, they like rent you out for like a month and like you just, you live on an Air Canada <laughs> no, flight and I, you do that for like 30 times a day. I realized today, I don't think I want to fly anymore, but that I can't, I don't have a choice. Honestly, today's flight, 
I turbulence. I don't love. I mean, you hate turbulence. If you were on this flight, I freak out. You know, if you were on this flight, you would have tried to open the window and jump out because oh, it was okay. it was that bad. <laughs> it was like I showed him my example of it was I had a little jar of gum and I had one piece of gum left in it. And I was like, it was like this. I was like shaking the gum. It was like, maybe you should have been there. It was not that interesting when I explained it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad you made it here safe. Me too. I'm glad that um, we're able to spend Valentine's Day together. Me too. Um, and I'm glad that we're here talking about spending Valentine's Day together because Very that's the most important. That's the most important. Did thing. it really happen if you didn't Instagram it or I, podcast or it pod in this case? That's my new thing. It's like, it didn't really happen unless you podcasted it. Right. Um, so let's do this. What are you most looking forward to this Valentine's day? Mm, spending time with you. <laughs> we actually decided, eh, wrong. <laughs> we decided to do a low key Valentine's day, which I'm really happy about actually. Well, it's nice because last year you were in Vancouver for Valentine's day. I was, I was working. So I had to send you flowers, um, via remote location. Uh, I had to send you flowers via remote location because I'm your boyfriend and I had to. Yeah. And I don't want to spoil anything, but now I get to give them to you in person. Oops, spoiled it. <laughs> it's not how it works. Oh, uh, uh, but isn't it going to be nice that we like we get to like hang out and be in each other's company? And I don't know what Ooh. we're going to do. I know we're going to go to dinner. That yeah. that much. I made the rezzo. That one is is conformed. 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 Um, but it could be fun to like comedy show. It could be fun to like movie. Happy Death Day to You just came out with Rachel in it. I really want to see that. Guys, oh, that came out for it. Valentine's Day? Came out, yeah, it came out on Valentine's Day. Oh, I'm today, super down for that. Tonight. Um, maybe not the first night because it's going to be insane, but apparently Rachel's character is like a huge part of it. So I'm very excited to see that. Cool. Shout out Rachel. Rachel which was, Lynn Matthews. Little which cutie. was crazy because um, before we went and saw the first one, I met her randomly in an audition and she came up to me. Had you met her through Cami and I yet? No. At that point? Oh. No, not at all. So I was like, I was in there and um, she just comes up to me and she's like, hey, your girlfriend's Madeline. I'm like, hey, yeah, you're right. And she's like, my name's Rachel. I'm da -da -da. Uh, she's Cammy's friend, right? She's like, yeah. I'm, I'm really good. I'm best friends with Cammy. Um, she's like, I love going up to Vancouver all the time, all this stuff. Yeah. And then, yeah, there was like 10 people ahead of us. So we ended up just like chilling in the hall. Um, there are very few people in the world that you meet and immediately just think that you're their friend and like want to be their friend. And that's the minute I met Rachel. I was like, all right, so we need to be friends. Yeah. And then after I met her, we literally, like a week later, we went to go see that movie. And I was like, oh mm -hmm. shit, this is what she, cause she was talking to me about it. She's like, mm -hmm. oh, I'm in this, this cool movie. It's called Happy Death Day. And, um, and then we went to like, I think not scare or, uh, universe, which one was Universal the with Blumhouse pictures. Exactly. Right? And mm -hmm. then they had like the whole Halloween haunted house thing. Oh my God. What? That freaked me out. I'm getting anxiety thinking about it. Oh, I loved it. Which one was the scariest? Which one did I get really scared in? Don't say all of them. No, which one was Definitely it? Definitely all of them. Where they opened, where they would like come out of the windows and they'd scream. Was that the vampire one? It was the vampire one. Oh, I thought that was the Stranger Things one. Why am I raising my hand? Um, <laughs> yes, you're allowed. Speak? Yes, you're Thank allowed you. to speak. The Stranger Things one was scary. A because we were filming it for my YouTube channel. Link in the description. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I had to be scared, and I was also amping myself up. And I went with my most scared friend. Like Michelle, easily is the most scared person in my life. But then we went. You also went with your bravest. The bravest person. Yeah, you, know. you were like laughing. At, remember when I fell and you like laughed? I picked you up. You picked me up, but you were like laughing. It was like funny. It wasn't scary at well, yeah, all you for fell you. in a haunted house and you were you were terrified it was really good this year though the thing that i love about it is like i know nothing bad is gonna happen like no matter how scary that it gets takes away the fun i no one's gonna kill me i convince myself that somebody is going to kill me no one's gonna hurt me i will that's actually not true what are you talking about it's not true remember i read to you right before we went to the universal one and this did not happen at universal disclaimer but i read to, about that woman who was handed a quote unquote prop knife by an quote unquote actor in the haunted house and Psychopath. was told to stab her boyfriend with this prop knife. And then she went to stab him and she actually stabbed him in real life. Well, anyone that's dating a girl that dumb that would stab their boyfriend deserves to die. I'm just going to say that. Like if someone handed you a knife oh my and, God. <laughs> and was like, yo, stab Travis uh, and you did it. I'd be like, all right, yeah, well, we should be together. Maybe there's some reasons why I wanted to stab you. <laughs> maybe she wanted to stab him. Maybe he said something stupid like that. So there you go. I hope he didn't die though, for real. No, he didn't. He's he's totally fine. Yeah, good. Yeah, it so was like I don't in feel the bad making that joke. Um, but yeah, he Jesus. should definitely break up with his girlfriend because, or you know what, just don't break reproduce. Do girlfriend. not have kids. Do not have kids. How about that? <laughs> Do not let that woman <laughs> birth your children. Okay, next topic. Oh well, I don't even know how we got on this topic. This is why this podcast is so brilliant. This is the most we've talked in weeks. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> that was funny. I'm funny. Well, you know, you want to know another thing that's funny, which we, uh, you were filming a vlog on the way over here in the car, and Correct. um, I get harassed every day online by I get online I get bullied online by your fans, um, because they ask me where I you're do at. Too, though, to be honest, <laughs> <laughs> they get they at literally every every fucking day. Where's Madeline? If I post like a picture, <laughs> like Madeline? if I post a picture like an Apple, like on my Beats One show, and I'm like with like you know some like Gucci Mane, they're like, "Where's Madeline?" Tell Vicky Robert. I'm like, I'm like, dude, what the fuck? If if I'm like playing paintball with someone, <laughs> that, where's Madeline? I'm just gonna start photoshopping you in the background <laughs> of every photo. Like put like your head in like the little corner and just like just there. You, I'm gonna do like a where's where's Madeline? Like a where's Waldo? That's actually a funny photo series that you, you think should so? do. I think so. Instagram call Jack. Let him know he <laughs> needs to do it ASAP. Oh yeah, I'm just gonna be like, yo, insert uh, her head here, please. Remember that time I was on a carpet and I fully photobombed you? It's still one of my favorite photos of us. Yeah, that was uh, with Chelsea. She took the photo. We were at the con, or it was some scary movie. Uh, Annabelle with uh, yes, with Talitha, in the it. doll movie. We went and saw Talitha. Yes. Yeah, Annabelle. It was some Annabelle's creation or something. Annabelle creation. That's literally exactly what it was. Um, yeah, and. You know, you walked the carpet. You looked beautiful. It's time for me to do my thing. And um, first photo taken of you. Literally, first photo. And I look at you. And I'm like, the, the duck lips, the peace sign. Like making a weird face. You're like half turned around. Like you were walking the other direction. I'm like, oh, hold on. on let carpet. me, uh, let let me, me just- fuck this up. <laughs> I love that photo too. And it's funny because I totally didn't see that happening. I'm funny. Yeah. Contrary to popular pop. I'm going to leave now, I think. <laughs> this podcast is brought to you, but no. <laughs> um, yeah, you are funny. I, I just would you like- You said that with such resentment in your voice. Yeah, you are yeah, funny. Yeah, I guess you are funny. I'll share, I'll share the humor in this relationship. I'd like to think that I kind of had an influence on your comedy. I think that every person in our lives has an influence on everything in our lives. Oh, yeah, okay. So are you trying to You're take credit? you getting real philosophical Are here? you trying to take credit for my hilariousness? No, not at all. Maybe I just create um, some funny situations in where that allow, that allow you to like shine. Yep. You set it all up. You're right. It's actually all you. I do nothing whatsoever. I just blurt out stupid stuff and then it works. Where's Madeline? Where's Madeline? That's the show. We're writing a show. It's going to be called Where's Madeline? And literally it's just all of these situations that you're not supposed to be in, but you end up popping up in. Is it a reality show? Oh my God. What? Forget this whole conversation. I watched all of Lohan's <laughs> Beach Club in like two days. Uh, Lindsay Lohan, you're, I assume. Lohan's Beach Club, of course. Lindsay okay. Lohan. Uh, I went to that dinner. I went to the dinner. Yeah. The, one, uh, yeah, the ship dinner yeah, at Tao. With Bear DiGidio. Yes, correct. Um, the Burger God. And it, he brought the girl... From that show. That's the show she was on. That's the show Wait, she was on. Wait, which girl? What's her the name? The girl, I, and I only know this because literally- No, all she, I need to know All her she name. said, I don't know her name. All she said was, she would talk, She was the girl that poured the bottle on some <gasps> dude's oh head. Oh my God, she's my favorite. What's her name? It's not May. Uh, Sarah. Yeah. Yeah. She's dope. Sure, yeah. <laughs> she fucked it up. That I was like, yeah, that's my girl. But she poured the bottle over I him. felt oh. so out of the loop because I hadn't uh, seen the show. And then everyone at the table was like, yeah, she she dumped that bottle classic, on that guy's head. Classic. But then they got back together and I was like, yeah. yeah. Oh, it was the guy she was dating? Yeah, but they met like a week before. Okay, so not really dating. But like they were like, he, he like you know who he looks like, by the way, the guy she was dating? Who? She looks like your friend Eli. Oh, really? He looks almost identical to Eli. Okay. Yeah, that's the, that was the point of that whole <laughs> sentence, was just that he looks like Eli. How the hell did you get into watching that show? Uh, I love reality television. You know that. You like bad reality television. I love it. I mean, well, it's on MTV, which, of course, is my favorite uh, channel in the world. And X on the Beach, which I love, is on there. Are You the One is on MTV. And now they've got Lohan's Beach Club. And so what, describe the show from, is it like a dating let show? Pa- let me paint a picture for you. Close your eyes. They are on the Mykonos beach and she has just bought, a, should I do ASMR? She has just bought a beautiful plot of land where she has <laughs> created a club in Mykonos. And her whole show is about, oh, I love that. You like the, the horns honking? In the background, yes. The whole show is about her finding the perfect brand ambassadors for her brand in Mykonos. They bring in 12 VIP brand ambassadors from Las Vegas, Los Angeles, and New York to Mykonos. And then there's a lot of drama. This sounds like the fire festival all over again. No, but you know what is weird? Conspiracy theory. Okay. Um, Somebody showed up to the location where it was supposed to have been shot 
and everything was gone but the sign. So part of me is like, was this just set up for the show? Oh, for sure. That bums me out. But it's nice because I was a Lohan fan when I was young. Like mm-hmm. that song, Confessions, I remember she was wearing that little white tank top. I remember I made my mom go buy me a white tank top when that came out. And I was like walking around the house, like doing a music video on my house. And I loved her. Like she was a redhead. And, and, and then all that stuff happened. And I haven't seen her in years now. And now she's got her own show. And it's kind of cool to see her like coming back again and like strong. And like launching her own Mykonos private resort. Which may be fake. Unclear. Clear. No, I Unclear. think we just got to the bottom of it. I think we did, but uh, if anyone's listening, Amik knows. Please go to the. <laughs> please tweet us and let us know if it's real. Must know. They're gonna tweet me a picture of like the 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 set, and they're gonna be like, "Where's Madeline?" <laughs> 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 they're gonna ask you for to be on season two. I guarantee it. I wouldn't mind going to the but you know going who, to Mykonos. There was like, they had every episode, they had a different celebrity VIP who would come in and like have a cabana and then they'd like put one of the brand ambassadors with them and make them do all these crazy things like, go find me the prettiest seashells and like the weirdest stuff. So it all seemed very set up. But I was like, guys, I never got a call to be on this. What the <laughs> hell? I hate the sun, but uh, come on. That's very true. Yeah, you are not the biggest fan of the sun. I mean, it, I like to look at it from afar. I <laughs> <laughs> like to appreciate it. Vacationing from with you anywhere tropical. <laughs> Whatever. We went on vacation to Cancun and I was such a champ. Yes. Yes, you were. I just, l- I lubed up sunscreen wise. <laughs> <laughs> and you made sure to have a cabana the whole time. Yeah. And I was fine. Yeah. And it torrentially down, it was like torrential downpour our last day there. Yeah. Which is perfect because we got a massage. You were sick anyways. And then we left. I was very sick. Oh my God. That plane ride back was also a terrible plane ride. Remember? <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing ASMR now. This is trans. This is transitioned to a strictly ASMR podcast. Um, I, 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 ADHD. Damn, that's the new intro. Fuck the song. That's what they do. They do that. Oh, you know what? I gotta tell everyone listening. If you guys care, I'm not. Uh, I'm not keto anymore. That's been like a whole week. Woo! You love it. I'm so happy. Yeah, I'm not. You want to know why too? One, it's just unsustainable for me because it's like Valentine's Day tomorrow. So like, I'm not going to eat keto tomorrow because she's obviously coming to town and we're going to go to a nice vegan Well, a vegan that's not restaurant. fair because I did look for, re- I, I, we always make- No, you did. You were very accommodating. We always make reservations last minute. And I think it makes my team want to rip their eyeballs out because I'll text them the day before and be like, hey, can you guys table at 8 p.m. at the most poppin' restaurant in LA on Valentine's Day? They're like, mm, let's try. And they never can. So we're going to the spot that we love so much. Mm-hmm. It's vegan. Oh, God. The best vegan food in, in Los Angeles. <laughs> That's how you say it, right? Vegan. I'm trying to swallow a burp, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> Um, yeah, we're going to go have, I mean, just probably strictly carbs. Like that's pretty much all of the You know what drives me so insane about you? What? Is that all you do is remind me that all I eat is carbs. And it's like, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And please stop reminding me because then it shames me. Then it makes me feel bad for eating carbs. Most vegan food is carbs. Right. But don't remind me about that. Like, I don't need to know that. Like I eat healthy. I work out. I don't need to be reminded that all I'm doing (laughs) is eating carbs. I'm a vegan. You're vegan. I get it. Okay. I get it. I get it. Why did I agree? Why to did you this? sign up for this? Not even the podcast, the relationship. It's like, <laughs> in general. Oh, I gotta love your team. You have, you know, an amazing team for making this happen. This, why re- you, this relationship. Why do you make this joke all the time, guys? When we first started dating, he would always tell me. Mark Pedowitz is the head of CW. Love him to death. Um, so do I. Travis would I always owe him one. Stop. Travis would always tell me that Mark hired him to be my boyfriend. It's very true. It's not true. And Every people, season I renegotiate. Travis, people are going to believe you and then like be freaking out. I'm an emotional support boyfriend. That's what I'm supposed to do. You have a bad day on set. He sends me in there. I just decided to stick around after I got laid off. You're annoying. <laughs> What's that movie? Like, uh, uh, fuck it. I think not one known a writer. Heath Ledger's in it. 10 Things I Hate About You? Oh, yeah. Oh, so good. Such a good film. So good. Mm -hmm. You know, I never understood why she got mad at the end when he's like, it was a dare to date you, but now I love you. And then- You never understood? If if I said to you on our first date, (laughs) the reason why I went on our first date was because my best friend dared me to. Well, they fell in love, love. Are we not in love, love? No, we are in love, love. If I told you that right now, you'd be like, yo, what the hell? You'd be like, you needed to be dared to go on a date with me? You can't act like you wouldn't be freaking out. You would. I know you. Oh, if someone dared you to go on a date with me? Yeah. Oh yeah, I'd be mad. But if That's someone- what happened <laughs> in that, but just reversed. It was the guy. Yeah, kind of. But Heath Ledger loved her. Like you could tell. 
Like they painted and shit together. Like, come on, where, where else is he painting? We've painted together. Yeah, no, I know. Remember that time I wanted to go buy art supplies? Remember that time that we got in a fight in an art supply store because we couldn't decide what we wanted to get? <laughs> and we were like, fuck it, let's just leave then. Well, we got, okay, here's one thing about us. So <laughs> we didn't get in like a fight. We just like got overwhelmed. I'm going to say overwhelmed. Um, There's too many choices and we couldn't. It was like snippy. It was like snippy. It was because I had my supplies and he had his and he's like, well, wait, you don't want to use the same canvas that I want to use? Like, but then, and then I was like, well, I want pastels like, and you want oil. Yeah, you're like, was like, I was like, I don't want a watercolor. You're like, well, that's what I don't I like want. <laughs> um, yeah, we just probably should never attempt to be, you know, mixed media artists. Why? It was fun. It was, oh, I mean, yeah. But I don't it, think we ever, did we ever go back and get supplies? We didn't, but we remember we painted vases together. Yes. We, we used to do a bunch of little art stuff, especially in the beginning. Definitely. Yeah, but that one time, I, shout out Blick. Shout out Blick Art Supplies. <laughs> we had like a little meltdown. Yeah, it was our, well, it was also raining in LA. And it was like kind blame of, it, blame it, it was one rain. of those days where everything just felt off. And we're like, let's get art supplies. It sounds like a great way to spend our day. And then as we were there, you realized how are we going to paint outside if it's raining? And then everything just started crumbling down. And I think we went home. Well, and then you realize that like we're not painters and then like, oh shit, this shit gets like mad overwhelming. And like, uh, you know, we were going to get small canvases though. So that doesn't really matter. Yeah. Well, hey, if anyone wants to see us paint, I don't know, maybe we'll make it happen. Should we do a 24 hour video of just a live stream of us painting for just 24 do the next hours? Pod, the next podcast will be like a paint cast. We'll just paint. Just a paint cast only. Yeah. I mean, I painted those behind you right there. Took a long time. It's really impressive. Success, hard work, Keep going. persistence, late nights, rejections, sacrifices. I did not. Those are gifts from Iconic, by the way. They were on the pod previously. Um, what else? I got a tattoo. Thank God I did not get it on my throat, which is a huge thanks to you. Uh, I think I, I do have the first ADHD tattoo for this podcast and uh, it was between wrist and throat and I FaceTimed you. <sighs> <laughs> what? Why are you? So why? What's the deep exhale? Just like the throat, like it's just a no-go zone. Like I think we should just like say no more throat tattoos. Mm -hmm. I think you got one very nice throat tattoo. Mm -hmm. Was that that was the one, the first one that your dad saw, right, or something? Wait, my my first throat tattoo that he saw. That was the first tattoo that he saw, right? Fuck no, he oh. saw my arm and shit. So that's the story that I remembered in my head. No, no, no. I just came home after getting my throat tattooed, not telling my parents anything. Oh, right. And my dad the good old just, throat tattoo. And my dad just got bitten by a snake right. in my house. Right, and you have Medusa on your neck with a bunch of and snakes. And I walked in with like a woman with snakes on her head and my dad just like looked at me disgusted. <laughs> he was like, like literally Aww. disgusted Joe. and was like, you look like you just got out of jail. So that's why, I mean, and you know what the worst part is about your throat tattoo situation, the new one? He wanted to do it right here. Like in the spot, that's, it's just screaming across, like- Across my uh, my Adam's apple. Correct. It. Thank you. I forgot people are watching <laughs> this sometimes. It, it just screams to me something that it sh that you shouldn't scream. Whatever that is. Like, help me or something, you know? <laughs> <laughs> like there might be somebody in the back of my truck. Ah, help me. Break up with me. <laughs> <laughs> Leave. <laughs> Get away. <laughs> no, he said to me on FaceTime. Ugly. <laughs> he said to me on FaceTime, where should I get it? And there's like a couple people in the background. And I was like, anywhere but the throat. And then his friend starts laughing. I'm like, why are you laughing? He was like, nah, it's just funny or whatever. That made Davis want me to get it on my throat that much Because more. Davis is just fucking annoying. Like, yeah. of course he wants it on a throat. You told Davis to like, Davis is a vegan. If you said you He's should be vegan. vegan, he would go eat meat just because you said to be vegan. Like, that's just Davis. Davis became a vegan when I was vegan. Um, and yeah, I was vegan. Meat-free tattooed on his arms. Yes. Love that. I was vegan when I was like 16, Can you 15? say that one more time? What? I will come over there and I will tattoo ADHD on your throat. Oh, I will tattoo vegan across your, uh, across your neck. <laughs> um, yeah, he copied me, literally. And, uh, and then but when then I stopped- But then he took it one step further. He yeah, he had to show me up and get a fucking carrot tattooed on him. But to be fair, I love Davis. <laughs> You're like, I fucking hate, he's annoying. He's, da, no, da, da. He is, <laughs> he's by far the most annoying person in my life. Definitely, same, I agree. I, I truly, I really like him. So, do, I mean, I love him, yeah. We've been, uh, you know, we've been friends for 15, almost 16 years. I'd call him one of my close friends now. Longest, longest friend I've, I've had. He probably texts me more than some of my friends, to be honest. He probably texts you more than he texts me. That's correct, but I'm it's always about the responsibilities about of the dog that nobody else takes care of other than myself. Wait, you mean Fig? He sent me, I didn't tell you about this. Yesterday, he sent me a photo of Fig's claws and said, you're the responsible one in the house. You need to get these fixed. 
we just got them fixed. The clock. What do you mean? That was a year ago. Oh yeah, my percep, my time perception oh my is uh, is off. Oh my goodness! And then I said to him, "If if I'm gonna do this, you have to take him with me because I'm not gonna carry this dog. He's he's the worst in a groomer. That dog is just terrible in the groomer. Ugh. So we'll see. Yeah, we have to like uh, we have to like give Fig anesthesia just to just to go and yeah, and get which groomed. makes me just not want to you know do that. It's not even worth it to get him groomed because putting your dog down is so scary. <laughs> Ooh, putting your dog under is so <laughs> Why don't scary. You, uh, retract that last statement. Putting your dog under is so scary. And we did so much research before the first time because we were afraid about his weight and how they handle it. And so now it's not really important to groom him as much as it is to just make sure his maintenance is, you know. Gotta go give him a little oil change every now and then. Yeah, just a quick little oil so, change. Just, <laughs> <laughs> it's my best sound effect for an oil change. You're welcome. You can sell that one. Thank you so much. Yeah, no uh, problem. Let's talk about us getting a second dog. Can we not do this right now? You don't want to? No, here's the thing. I want a second dog, okay? I went to the ASPCA like two weeks ago, Lincoln bio. I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> and I saw all these beautiful dogs, but I need a small dog that I can travel with. I will not, I, I just can't travel with a large Doberman right now, which is the dog that I fell in love with at the ASPCA. And I'm not buying another dog ever. So well, you're not flying anymore. So I think it's safe to get the Doberman. Okay. I work in Vancouver. It's just literally not going to happen. <laughs> Oh, oh, by the way, congratulations. You guys just got picked up for season four. Thank you. Thank you. If you don't know what we're talking about, uh, don't listen to the podcast. No, just kidding. It's, uh, <laughs> it's a show called Riverdale and she's on it. Four seasons. If you would have told me four years ago that I'd be on a TV show that went to a fourth season, I would not believe you. You know how few shows get to a third season, let alone a fourth? It's no, like such a lot, a lot. No, it's such a small amount of shows that actually make it to a fourth season. I was talking to Machen Ahmet, who plays Alice Cooper on the yeah. show. She's been in so many television shows. She was a uh, what was that? The show that just came back to Twin, um, Peaks, Twin Peaks, Witches of Eastwick. Um, she did Gossip Girl, Gilmore Girl. I mean, she's done so many huge shows. Um, and we just announced that Chad Michael Murray's on our show as well too, and he says the same thing. It's like so few television shows really make it to the fourth season mm. and to be able to do that's a huge accomplishment. So I'm, I'm really proud of our crew is so good. We've had the same crew as last year and I'm really proud of us. It's great. That's insane. And is it going to be just as many episodes as season two and three? Hasn't been announced. So I'm unclear, but my, my guess would be 22. Yeah. Wow. I mean, and another thing that's already public knowledge, I've known about this for a little bit, but Claire at 16. Mm -hmm. Claire at 16. Which is your uh, your film that you're going to be doing over hiatus and your executive producing the movie. I am, which is so exciting. I've never done anything like that before. Wow. I'm, I'm very excited. I've always been very interested in the world of producing. And Sarah Schechter is a producer on our show who is like just a fucking girl boss. Like I've never seen somebody who... She, she's just so good at her job. And I ran into her about two and a half weeks ago and she told me how many projects she has on air right now. And I don't want to, I don't want to miss quote her, but I want to say it's around 11 or 12. Damn. And she's now developing like three more and I'm just blown away by her. And I'm really excited to learn about producing and being on that side as well. And also it's a really cool role. Like really Can you talk cool. about it? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but it's really cool. It's really different. It's, Isn't it? Uh, it's based off of a book too, right? Yeah. Okay. I don't know if I'm allowed to talk about that. Yeah, you don't need to. Cool. But you know what I know? I know I do know though is any movie that's like based off of a book or anything huge, and they always do a bunch of them. Thanks. I love yeah. that. I hope that I hope that's exactly what happens. Any movie that's based <laughs> off a book, huge, huge. I mean, you look like Lord of the Rings, Harry Potter. I mean, oh even my Game god, of Thrones. this is like a completely different genre of film. Yeah. Very. I mean, what book films? No, oh. Lord of the Rings, Harry Potter, and Game of Thrones versus Claire at 16 <laughs> are two different worlds. One of my biggest accomplishments, though, is getting you to watch Game of Thrones with me. That's one of your biggest accomplishments? Yeah, because we were so anti-Game of Thrones. I'm just like anti-establishment, you know what I mean? Oh, you're so <laughs> anarchy. Like, when I look at you, your look screams anarchist. No, I just mean like, that was the, it was a joke. Uh, no, I have a weird thing with if something's gone too far, yep. like if we've done, Same. if Game of Thrones has done what? I don't even know how many seasons they're now, on a lot. 11 but, or let's some shit. At, let's, that's not accurate. It's oh. like seven. Okay. But Supernatural's on like 14. <laughs> Supernatural's on like 14. And like at this point, I couldn't imagine digging in and, and starting a 14 year journey. Like I just don't have the patience or the wherewithal for that. And I know that I'll drop off at some point and be like, why did I just waste 40 hours of my life? you know, on Game of Thrones. So we started it. It's fine. It's more of like a fall asleep show for me now. I'm not like, I mean, you know what I'm excited for? What? 
Say it with me now. Marvelous, Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. Oh, God. I guess she's Miss now. Spoiler alert. Whoa. Whoa. Ooh. Whoa. No, literally best show on television. I would agree. Well, it's uh, actually not on television. Best video on demand show. Yeah. And I, I, I'm going to say it's one of my favorite shows. Um, Pose last year that oh. was on FX. That was an incredible show. Remember when I um, met Blanca? I don't remember what her name is in real life, but and I almost cried. Yeah, because she walked in and I started talking to her <laughs> and you were somewhere else. Oh, you were talking to, I think, Casey. Yeah. Um, and we were at some party and I was like, oh my God, you have to meet my girlfriend. By the way, have I ever fangirled over anybody No, ever? nobody. Never. But I knew that we, I mean, we obsessed over the show and we, we watched the show, I think, in four days. We cried after every single episode. That's when I describe, when I describe the show to everyone, it's like, it's very rare that a show will- It's like and, an emotional like, roller coaster. It will make me feel- Every range of emotion yeah. possible in one episode. But every, there is not one actor on that show that is not superb. Mm -hmm. The writing is gorgeous. The The cinematography is gorgeous. I mean, I'm such a huge Ryan Murphy Wardrobe fan. Wardrobe is insane. Wardrobe is insane. But then the whole message is really interesting. And I, I've never even learned about that at all. So to be able to kind of open my eyes to a whole new world was really emotional. About being trans in the 80s. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was, yeah, it was eye-opening. It was informative. It was educational. It was... But groundbreaking also, for me. I don't know. It was like literally any, any show that I can like laugh and learn cry. Like I got upset, you know, I was like mad. You were like emotionally invested in that series. And I feel Definitely. the same way with marvelous Mrs. Maisel. Like it took every bit of willpower that Will every Pierre? bit of will, will Pierre. willpower that I have, whoops, um, to not watch it while I've been in Vancouver, which is why I watched Lohan beat club. Got it. So you went from watching like an incredible show. It was like, I was so antsy <laughs> at home that I was like, what am I going to watch? And then I'd see Mrs. Maisel on my Amazon Prime and I'd be like, do I hit it? No, don't hit it. That's like <sighs> eating like nothing but salads and then just going to the fridge and grabbing a Snickers. That's literally the definition of a guilty pleasure. That's why I call yeah. reality television my guilty pleasure. Got it. Okay. Okay, cool, cool. <laughs> okay, great. Cool. Back to ASMR. Oh my God. I'm trying <laughs> to think of what I've been watching uh, when you were away. Uh, oh, you. I watched, started watching you. Well, I binged you. Yeah. Y-O-U is the name of the show. You, um, which is a lifetime show. No, I've been watching Netflix. you. I set up cameras in your apartment in okay, Vancouver. Okay, I'm trying to I'm trying to clarify for those of whom who don't know. Um, it is the same, executive, the same executive producers as our show. I'm losing it. And it is so good. I binged it in 48 hours. I honestly stayed up until 5 a.m. one morning watching it, like kind of half watching it and then rewatched it again when I woke. It's just so good. Have you finished it yet? No, I'm I'm like one episode oh away. God. So that ending, woo, scary. Really? Oh. I don't find it that like. Look, the, look, you don't find it scary. I don't want to give anything away in case uh, anyone wants to watch it. Let me set the scene for you guys. It's about a guy who owns a bookshop who falls in love with a woman, and then it gets progressively scarier as it goes on. But as a, as a woman, a young woman, it's a scary thought. Oh, definitely, I could see that because they're falling in love, and she has no idea what's going on, and so that's terrifying because you never know who you're sleeping next to. That's right. So I'm looking directly in your eyes. If you ever, you it know. It could be a vegan. You could be sleeping next to a vegan and not there even know There are literally it. chuckles outside. That's how funny. <laughs> that's how funny you are. Let's do some ads. Know your Come audience. Yeah. Do the ads. Let's it's get to the ad. ads. It's ad time. Uh, today's podcast. Damn, you want to know how I know uh, this podcast is, is successful? Because we got a shitload more ads this episode. <laughs> Um, today's episode is brought to you by Squarespace, uh, from websites and online stores to marketing tools and analytics. Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence and run your business. Wow. They empower millions of dreamers, makers, and doers by providing them with the tools they need to bring their creative ideas to life on Squarespace's dynamic all-in-one platforms. Customers can claim a domain, build a website, sell online, and Market a brand. Whoa. Their suite okay. of products combines cutting edge design and world class engineering, making it easier than ever to establish and own your online presence. One thing I will say is that I just made a website, uh, I am travismills.com. Hey. And I actually used uh, Squarespace to do it. And uh, I got, I think, 10% off my website by using my own promo code. So this is like, you know, I don't know if it's self this is so promo. Meta. Yeah, it's, it's very meta. <laughs> but uh, it's also never been easier to sell products or services online. Squarespace allows you to easily manage your products, orders, and inventory. If you're ready to start your new business, make it with Squarespace. Build it, make it, show it, sell it. But that's like that song. 
Sorry. What Keep the Daft, Daft Punk one? Yeah. Build I it. Use Ma- it. Yeah, let's <laughs> you could you can build it, make it, show it, sell it, build it, make it, show it, sell it. Uh head yeah. over to squarespace.com slash ADHD uh for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, hit squarespace.com slash ADHD to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Thank you, Squarespace. Today's episode is also brought to you by Audible. Um, what would it look like if we all just listened more? Listening to audiobooks inspires us, motivates us, even brings us closer, and there's no better place to listen than Audible. Audible has the largest selections of audiobooks on the planet, and now Audible members get more than ever before. Each month, you get three titles of your choice, one audiobook, two Audible originals, and fitness programs that you can't get anywhere else. There's never been a better time to experience Audible. You can try it free for 30 days by visiting audible.com slash ADHD or by texting ADHD to 500-500. Once again, audible.com slash ADHD or you can text ADHD to 500-500. Once again, membership includes one free audiobook a month, uh, exclusive sales, and 30% off all regularly priced audiobooks. What were they? Regularly Priced uh, audiobooks. Regularly, correct. Okay. Regularly. I'm Great. talking like you now. Um, today's, by the way, I use Audible. Happy Valentine's Day to me. <laughs> uh, when I'm running right now, I'm listening to this book, Can't Hurt Me by David Goggins, and I'm listening to it on Audible. Uh, I'm being dead serious. I've, I've like listened to, I think, like five books in the last month, which is, which is awesome. Awesome. And you did a YouTube video sponsored by them as well, right? Mm-hmm. It's awesome. Love it. Awesome Audible. Love Audible. Love. Love Audible. Uh, Today's show is also brought to you by BetterHelp. Uh, If there's something that interferes with your happiness or is preventing you from achieving your goals, BetterHelp Online Counseling is there for you. You can connect with your professional counselor in a safe and private online environment. It's convenient. You can get help on your own time and at your own pace. You can schedule secure video or phone sessions, plus chat and text with your therapist, uh, licensed professional counselors who are specialized in depression, stress, anxiety, relationships, sleeping, trauma, anger, uh, LGBT matters grief, self-esteem, anything you share is confidential. confidential. And if you are not happy with your counselor for any reason, you can request a new one at any time for no additional charge. They have 3,000 U.S. licensed therapists across all 50 states. They are available worldwide for communication modes, text, chat, phone, and video, and you can start communicating within 24 hours. Um, Best of all, it is uh, it is a great option. With ADHD listeners, you get 10% off of your first month with discount code ADHD. So why not get started today? Go to betterhelp.com slash ADHD, fill out a questionnaire to help them assess your needs and get matched with a counselor that you'll love. That's betterhelp.com slash ADHD. One more ad, and this one comes from Dollar Shave Club. And I had to bring it too on the podcast um, because they sent me this this toothbrush that's really cool. And uh, I'm going to read the ad while I pull out this toothbrush. I feel like I'm watching a TV show right now. Yeah. Yeah. It's called ADHD. With Travis Bills. With your boyfriend. Mm-hmm. It's called ADHD BF. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's go. Here we go. Uh, We all have our everyday grooming routines from showering to brushing our teeth uh, to, yes, shaving. A lot of you have probably heard of Dollar Shave Club and think they only stick to shaving products. Well, don't let their name deceive you. Dollar Shave Club can solve all of your grooming needs in one box. Shower products, oral care products, hair products, skin products, butt wipes. They have butt wipes if you need to wipe your butt. Uh, And obviously, shaving products. And you may be thinking these products are just for men. But that is not the case. All Dollar Shave Club products are unisex, so we have the ladies covered. That's what I got you for Valentine's Day. Oh my gosh, thank you you so much. Um, Not only do they ship them right to your house, but the more you buy, the more you save. They call it their handsome discount. You know what I'm saying? Right now, they have this great offer where you can get the shave shower and oral starter set, each only for five bucks. They sent me their oral kit, uh, their oral care kit, and it comes with their weighty toothbrush right here. And this thing looks so cool. It looks like a little robot. And uh, it says Superba on the toothbrush. And I can't wait to start using this. Uh, And then they also sent me um, 
a trial version of their toothpaste. Uh, join the club with one of their starter sets for just five bucks. After that, the restock box ships regularly sized products at a regular price. You can get this exclusive deal at dollarshaveclub.com slash Travis Mills. Today, get a toothbrush like me. You will not regret it. How'd you like that? Gorgeous. How'd I do? Gorgeous. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, I'm proud. Very Thank proud. Thank you. Yep. Mm-hmm. Thank you. I'm, I'm, I appreciate it. Proud mom. Oh, that was a lot. Now I can finally calm down and, uh, ooh, should we talk about some tea? What's the tea? I don't know. I, that's I'm drinking I tea. Yeah. I don't have any tea. For you me. are like one of the few people that uh, I've noticed. It can be like fucking freezing cold outside and you'll get an ice beverage. Correct. Why? Well, you know, I got back into my cold brew mood because <laughs> for a while there I wasn't, I was drinking hot coffee, but I wasn't getting quite the buzz that I needed. When I wake up at 4 a.m. to get to set or 5 a.m., Two shots of espresso doesn't quite do it for me. And uh, You need something cold? Well, no, cold brew was just a highly concentrated coffee. Uh, it's much more concentrated than espresso, at least. I don't like hot coffee, like just regular brew. It just kind of tastes like hot sludge to me. But for some reason, cold brew tastes good. I don't have to put anything in it. I just enjoy the taste of cold brew. Oh, you just drink it like straight? Yeah, black. Damn. It's actually really delicious. Really? I even enjoy Starbucks cold brew. Okay. Yeah. That's what, that's been my new kick lately. I'm really into it. So when I make you coffee in the morning, you don't like it. I didn't say that. Okay. You would just prefer for me to go brew some cold. Rarely (laughs) happens. So I should just start uh, brewing some cocoa bean or some coffee beans. Brew some cocoa beans for me, actually. (laughs) I'd like some cocoa bean cold brew, please. Would that be like chocolate coffee? No, just chocolate. Or like cocaine. Chocolate Cocoa beans. Cacao. What is the difference between cocoa and cacao beans? That's what I want to know. Well, cocoa, I was going to pull out a random fact. Okay, <laughs> what's a random fact? <laughs> but it's not real. Like I was going to make it up. Yo, for everybody listening, if you're oh watching God, or whatever. Uh, yeah, no, you, ha- you have to. Madeline is the queen of, we'll be having like a crazy discussion and she'll just pull out some random fucking fact. Say it with conviction and then like three days later, I'll but find out. it sounds out, right, you know? It, yeah, you're, you're <laughs> talented at that. You're talented at saying things and making them sound correct. But, you know, the validity of your claims are not always supported by science. But I'd say like 75% of the time, I'm typically like somewhere near the ballpark of correct. <laughs> <laughs> Give me an example. I want to hear what you're going to say about cocoa beans crying. or cacao beans. <laughs> The other day I was in the car with my friend Priscilla and we had just watched the Ted Bundy documentary. I'm actually crying right now. This is so funny. And she was like, Ted Bundy's the one who, (laughs) Ted Bundy's the one who would fake uh, injuries so that he could get help. Right. And I was like, nope, that was Manson. (laughs) Just kept talking, like just kept the conversation going for at least 20 minutes. And she looked at me, she's like, are you sure it was Manson? I was like, I have no fucking idea. What goes in your head and makes you say those things? Because I was sure at the time that it was Manson. And then afterwards I was like, fuck, I don't think I'm right. Do you have like a, like a, just a knowledge of serial killers, like a database in your head? I do really enjoy serial killer documentaries. So yeah, I do have a quite, uh, ple- I have a plethora of knowledge up there. Mm. From just, the old <laughs> noggin. <laughs> just stored about useless, useless things. I wouldn't call that useless. Serial killer knowledge? I wouldn't call that useless at all. I'm probably well equipped to not be murdered by a serial killer. How? How so? Because I'm aware of how they do it. N- no, you literally told me the other day that you were in an elevator with some weirdo. <laughs> Throwing me under the bus? Let me look cool. Oh, yeah. You know Don't what? Don't shout out the weird dude in the elevator. Come on. Don't yeah. shout him out. No, no, no. Shame on him. Shame on him. Shame on you, weird guy in an elevator. <laughs> Don't make my girlfriend feel weird. And you're lucky that you're in another country. Wait, wait, wait. You know what we should talk about? What? Do you remember when I was leaving the recording studio from the musical episode and I texted you about that guy on the bike? Okay. Okay. Guys, I was in Vancouver. We were shooting the musical episodes. We had to go to the studio. And because we were working throughout the day, my studio sessions could be from like 7 p.m. to 10 or till 11 p.m. And so I was getting out of the session and I was driving my car out and there's a a gate and it's kind of in like a scarier part of LA or Vancouver. It's a little bit more terrifying where it is. And so I'm opening the gate to get out. And there's this guy on a bike playing really loud metal music with a mask on and just staring at me. And, and it was like a, it was like a purge mask, right? Well, hold on, I'm getting there. So he's wearing. Does this guy's wearing just like a baklava? Is that what they call them? The baklava, the ones with the a balaclava, a balaclava, right? Where baklava. They, a baklava. Can we? How do you say that? A baklava. A balaclava or I a think baklava? It's a, a baklava. Baklava. 
Baklava. Baklava? Baklava? <laughs> baklava is a dessert. Then it's a balaclava, which is what I said originally. <laughs> we need to cut this part out yeah, until we, I find no, out. No, no, you keep this shit in. No, this no, is no, gold. No, 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 no. Balaclava. Wow! I was right. A close fitting garment covering the whole head and neck, except for parts of the face, typically made of wool. I was right in the first place. Don't ever try to correct <laughs> me again. I was right. I was right. I was right. I was okay. right. I was right. I was right. Okay, was right. you got this right. one. Okay, right. Um, that's the I was right song by Madeline Petch. You can find it on SoundCloud later this year. Uh, anyways, <laughs> Shazam so- it now for exclusive, <laughs> 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 exclusive ADHD behind the scenes content. Uh, so this guy's wearing a balaclava, which we just looked up, and I'm. So he's eating a baklava. <laughs> Baklava. Okay, anyways, we're moving on from this conversation. He's sitting on this bike looking at me. I'm in my car and we're kind of doing a little bit of a stare down. I'm like, at some point, he's going to move, right? Just imagining him. I was just waiting, waiting. And then finally, I'd say a solid two minutes after I'm waiting there. I'm just terrified at this point, sweating. Just what do I do? It's nighttime. No one's around. Still staring at him. Still like, oh, I don't want to break eye contact because that's when he could get me. I don't know what's going on. And so then he starts bicycling away, right? And as he's going away, there's he's built this platform that's loaded the ground with wheels on it that's attached to the back of his bike. And there was a guy, I am not joking, a guy sitting there cross-legged with a machete in one hand and some kind of mallet in the other across his body with a purge mask on staring at me. And I thought I was going to die that night. It was the scariest thing. I've never seen anything like it. Just in downtown Vancouver. Yeah, and I remember you telling me this and like I couldn't even come up with a rational explanation of why. There's no rational explanation for that. There's no rational explanation. Yeah, definitely not. I don't know. And- Here's my thing, though. What if he just kept looking at you because you were looking at him? Do you ever I, think about that? I just don't want to be, you know, like, I don't want to be the weak one and, like, break <laughs> eye contact. <laughs> if we're being honest, I don't want to be like, oh, shit, he's looking at me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be like, okay, and I can take you, you know? I want I want him to believe that I could actually do some damage, which I can't. But if I look at him with enough strength. Conviction? Conv- that's my That's my thing. Just acting like I have a lot of confidence. And it sometimes works in my favor. In that case, not so much. But with you, it seems to. What, when you look at me like that? With conviction. Well, when I say things with conviction, it oh, I typically believe you. works. I believe you for sure. Yes, yeah, yeah, definitely. Well, that's just called trust. It's called a loving relationship. That's called a good dynamic. It's called yeah. positive and, and reinforcement. I, I make it cute and fun. It's like an endearing quality of mine that I don't always know what I'm saying. Except when like I'm having a conversation with like other people and then I bring up, I recite like something you told me and they're like, yo, that is, cor- that is like absolutely and then you say, not correct. Oh my goodness. I'm kidding. Ha ha. Just testing you. <laughs> the best pass off. Just making sure you're sharp. Making sure you're paying attention to what I'm saying. I'm trying I'm to think saying. of what else you've kind of, you try to pass off as like logic or fact. I don't really remember. I'm just trying to see what else I've been deceived. Uh, I've, I've been. This is going to a very dark place that I'm not <laughs> enjoying. Welcome to therapy with Madeleine Petch and Travis Mills, yeah. where we discuss the deepest, darkest secrets of our minds. You wish, man. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I can literally hear laughs We're out there. We're getting all the laughs tonight. Yeah, and everyone that's listening or watching this is just bored. They're already, they're already watching. They already they're watching your off. your Universal Studios behind the scenes videos <laughs> right now. So we can really say whatever we want because no one's listening anymore. Yeah. Okay, go for it. Tell me your darkest um, secret. Oh, man. I don't know. This is our second Valentine's Day together, though. It is. I met you seven days after the one before the, our last one. I met you on the 21st of February. So yeah, it would have been three Valentine's Day. It's, so it's like two Valentine's Days in a week. Mm-hmm. Crazy. That's insane. That's, you know what? How do you remember that? I remember, you know this about me. I remember very strange things, but typically dates. I'm really good with dates other than birthdays. I'm not great. This is hard. When's my birthday? Well, I know yours. It's April 12th. Yeah. Wait, but how do you know that it was exactly a week after? Because I remember that you messaged me, I think like the day after Valentine's Day, because I I fit, I wrapped Riverdale on Valentine's Day, season one. Why can't, why can't you be wrapped Friday? Because I did 13 episodes season one. And now you guys are doing 23. So then I went to my parents' house on the 15th. And I remember I was there for six days and went, I just remember that whole time because it was like very pivotal for me. It was my first season of a television show. You could probably ask me any minute detail of that year. And I could tell you because I was so hyped about my life. And then I came back and I met you and it all went to shit. Yeah. And just all downhill (laughs) from there. All too true. Awkward. 
Mm, that hurts. That hurts so good. That's so good. You know? Yeah, I mean, I feel the same, you know? Like, I met you and just my life consistently got worse. Yeah. Definitely and here we like are, yeah. you know? Ooh, this podcast was built to be an escape. And uh, instead, it, uh, it's just haunting. God. <laughs> I'm confined. <laughs> I'm confined to the studio now. Yeah, Once confined. Confined, yeah. yes. <laughs> <laughs> On this episode of Bay DHD, uh, here we go. All right, you're the host. Come on. Of Bay DHD? Host it. Host um, this thing. First kiss. What date was it? Uh, well, we met on the 21st and we hung out three days. So I would say it was probably the 24th. You kissed me like on our third date, fourth yep. day. Yeah. You took Taylor and I out that night. Shout out to the world's best girl, Taylor. Don't say, well, I didn't take you guys both out. It was just well, like- Well, no, I mean like, yeah. you know, it was the first time that you- It's like, not make it, it weird. You just made it weird. Sorry. It wasn't weird. Guys take their their girlfriend's friends and their out. friends. Yeah, yo, you got to do that. Yeah, well, yeah, you kind of do have to. Yeah, and if, you know, you like that show you, then sometimes you murder them. Don't <laughs> say that. Oh my God, do you guys, have, have you ever seen the show, Who the Bleep Did You Marry? Did yeah, I marry? all the time. We're going to be on it one day. That gives me anxiety. I can't wait. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, uh, Do you ever think about that? About <laughs> what? No. Just about like about the possibility. who you are secretly? No, 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 no. Not about me. I feel like you know who I am. I feel like you, like, you know all too well. Like we I know. Like I learn more about you every day. Really? Oh yeah. Damn. Do you not feel the same way about me? Well, yeah. So like you've gotten, you know everything you need to know now. I mean, it's I don't know over. everything, but yeah, I feel like I feel like I know. I know, like I have you in a like you know in a nutshell down pretty good. I don't want to be in a nutshell. No, help! I'm in a nutshell. <laughs> <laughs> That's the vegan in you. Oh, no nuts were harmed in the making. Remember of this. how when I first started YouTube, I would name all of my videos "My Life in a Nutshell" because I thought that was so clever, but it wasn't clever at all. You did. Yeah, like the first, the face you're making right now is savage. My life in a nutshell, for you went, real? You went, you did? <laughs> Ooh, yeah, they were called my life in a nutshell, the first three. Damn, I remember you making your first video. Yeah, and I was, I remember I went through like, probably I edited that thing probably 16 different versions, at least. Taking out words, adding words, I was so nervous to put it up. Damn, remember me showing you how to edit? Yeah, I know. Control B, and then you surpassed me with and the editing I'm skills? And editing queen. I love editing. I was just talking. Now to you're your editing about Riverdale. That. I mean, it's crazy. It's so crazy. Yeah, I <laughs> now to Riverdale. It's really cool. <laughs> just kidding. We have like the world's best editor. We cool, but weird fact: our editor of the pilot actually just directed an episode that aired last Wednesday. Oh, crazy! Isn't that cool, Henry? Yeah, yeah. that's amazing. Harry, Henry, Harry, you Harry. Said it you said it with conviction. That's Once what again, I do, I though. See, like you. my brain was like Henry, but it's actually Harry. He's great. It was really cool because I remember. In the pilot, I went and visited a lot to see how it was going. And I went and I had to go to the editing bay to do a scream for them because they wanted some random scream and I didn't go to ADR for it. And I met him there and then flash forward two and a half years and he's now at our- And you were like, wait, didn't I meet show. you at an editing bay? Well, I was like, didn't you edit our show? And he was like, yeah, now I'm directing. It's pretty cool. Well, that's crazy. I've always said this though, because I feel like, I feel like editing is almost, it's, I mean, it's just as important as like shooting it, right? Because you can't- Speaking of that- I am so frustrated. Did you hear what categories they took out of the Oscars this year? Uh, what? Cinematography yeah, exactly. and editing and then makeup, makeup Wally, and hair. Uh, this cinematographer who I worked with on Flaked, Wally Pfister. I mean, he shot Batman. He um, shot every, like a bunch of incredible movies. He shot Shutter Island. Um, he shot fucking- Emmanuel Lubezki, who shot Gravity and all of these crazy things, shot my first ever Honda commercial. And he posted about it. I still follow him. And he's won multiple Oscars Same for cinematography. Yeah. And I would I would be mortified because honestly, you can make you not no shade, but you can make these movies without these actors. You can make them without basically anybody, but you can't make a movie without cinematography and you can't make a movie without editing. You really can't. I That's, just feel like every everybody plays a critical role there. Well, hundred yeah. percent. But it's it's just so frustrating because it's like they're that what they're doing is they're just kind of sucking the art out of it. I feel like mm. cinematography is such a large art. Well, it's you watch a, a movie like Inception, right? right? And like the way that it was shot, and that's why I was so so excited to work with Wall with Wally. He's a fucking G. He like just the way his brain works is insane. Well, they have to think about every piece of it, right? Just like a director, it'd be like taking out the director category. To me, mm -hmm. it's it's a, of the same importance. It's crazy. I was really upset about that. 
Yeah, I saw Seth Rogen just posted something about and that. And cinematography as well. sets the tone. Like if you think about Riverdale, which is the only real experience I can talk about, the first shot of Riverdale is a um, other than this, the whole city shot in the very beginning is of Jason and I coming down in this the beautiful river. scene down to the river in the car and the way Lee set it up and the lighting and everything is so stylized. That set the tone of the whole show. I'm actually really upset about it. It really bums me out. Oscars are next weekend, guys. Don't forget to tune in. <laughs> Flood. <laughs> <laughs> Flood the fucking comments. Oh, man. That's insane. I wonder why they would do that. Um, somebody, and I don't know if this is true or not. I don't, do they have live performances at the Oscars? I don't remember that, but maybe they Wait, do. I think, I heard Lady Gaga was performing there. I think you're thinking of the Grammys. No, 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 no. no. Oh, probably wrong. Yeah, I'm definitely probably wrong. Did you see her Grammy performance, by the way? No, did not. Did you? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Comment down below your thoughts on the that. Only do, uh, the only Grammy performance I saw was uh, Dolly Parton. You know who I was impressed by? I don't listen to country, as you know, but Vanessa's favorite song is When I Taste Keela. Dan and Shay. I didn't know that guy had pipes like that. They're married. That. To each other? Yeah. That's cute. I love that. I didn't know that. Yeah. That guy, I don't know if it's Dan I or Shay. I said that like a fact. Hold on. I this just is what I do. Check. He did what I did. <laughs> um, I just got to check. I just got to check. But- the, I don't know which one is which, but that guy who was playing piano has crazy pipes. Like I, I was blown away. I felt like, I'm not sure if this is true or not. Do a lot of people lip sync at the Grammys? Do you know? Oh shit. Okay. Okay. They're not married. Well, they, they are married, just not together. Okay. So Dan, and, Dan is married to a woman named Abby. Okay. Uh, Shay. Shay is married to someone named Hannah. Hold on. So you pulley, you just you're pulley, you fully pulled that just straight out of there. You just that had no factual at all. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, definitely. Okay, great. <laughs> Love that. So you want to know what I think is I think I saw a picture of them and they both had wedding rings on and, and you uh, made an I just assumed. Yeah. You know what they taught me in school? When you make an assumption, you make an ass out of you so, yeah, and, and me. me. There and then go. what about Tion? Huh? What about Tion? What? Tion. What are you talking about? The end of assumption. Tion. T I O N. <laughs> what about Tion? You drive me, <laughs> like, you absolutely drive me insane. <sighs> Take a deep breath. It's going to be okay. I took a deep breath. I took a deep breath. We're good. Um, I promise I'll get this all out before Valentine's Day. Oh, thank you. You know what's, uh, <laughs> you know what's really fun is uh, we were still supposed to go. Oh. Yeah, that's incredible. But we were supposed to go get massages uh, back like in Christmas and we still haven't gotten them. No, it's never going to happen because every time we call those people, they laugh about the fact that we're calling with like a week's notice. The, I literally it's call the, the massage place and I'm like, uh, hey, I'd a like to book a, a couple's massage. And she's like, uh. she goes, <laughs> <laughs> for when? Oh, a week? <laughs> You're like, okay, so no then? How about next year? Literally, that's how I feel. Mm -hmm. So maybe it's not even, maybe your parents knew that when they got the certificate and conspiracy oh. theories with Shane Dawson. Maybe your parents knew that. And so you don't have to pay, you don't have to pay for the massage until, until, until you actually get them. Oh. So they're like, yo, this is like a placeholder gift. They're never going to get it. Fuck it. But they also know us well enough that we're probably not going to drive all the way out there just for a massage. Yeah, it's like an because hour and a half. then think about, I mean- very sweet gift. They probably are trying to coax us to go see them, which oh, I understand. Oh, no, 100%. It's, but they're then baiting us. We go to get a massage, right? Setting the tone. And then we have to drive an hour and a half back once we're now calm. Mm. That's like, why you get a Tesla and you have that shit drive you I automatically. Am, I am not standing self-drive. Oh, I am. I do not. I do not do. No. Nope. I'm putting an orange in the steering wheel and that shit is driving mm. the whole way. You don't got to touch it. You don't got to do anything. I don't trust machines. What? <laughs> you literally just got off an elevator. <laughs> like, like that is the, the definition of trusting a machine. You use your iPhone. I'm loopy, okay? <clears throat> I got stuck in an elevator like a couple weeks ago. And I'll and be Instagram honest with you. Instagram story, the whole thing. I did Instagram story, the whole thing. But that shit was frightening. And if I was like 30 floors up, I would have been fucking crying. What is that movie? Devil. Where they're stuck in an elevator with the devil the whole time. Trying to figure out who it is. And then people just keep dying. What? You've never, that's actually, I love horror films. So like me saying it's a good horror film doesn't really mean much, but it's oh, actually- You also said that this one movie was- uh, Small Town Folk. <laughs> yeah, Guys, if you haven't seen Small Town Folk yet, 
turn off this podcast. I think we talked about this on the first podcast. I don't think we did. Not enough if we did. Or we've talked about this so much though. It's such a great film. It is like classic, classic. Talk to me about this elevator movie though. Cause I need, I need it. It sounds like something I need to see. I think it came out late 2000s. And I remember because I was really looking forward to it. I went through a phase where I went when Blockbuster was still around. I went and watched every single horror film on Blockbuster. And so once I'd gone through all of those, Devil had just gone to theaters. And I remember going with my best friend at the time. And I thought it was a pretty cool concept. It's five or six people get trapped in an elevator, all of different lifestyles. And slowly like the power will go out quickly and then somebody's dead, dead or something like that. And then at the end you figure out who the devil is and it's, it's very scary. I want to see that. It's pretty good. I want to watch it tonight. I'm actually down. Yeah? Yeah, I haven't seen it in a minute. I like doing that. You know that. I like watching movies with you again. It reminds me um, of that Colin Farrell movie, Phone Booth. Mm -hmm. Like, I love, I like love those films where it takes place in like one specific spot. Have you seen, I don't remember what it's called, but the Ryan Reynolds film where he's buried alive? No. It's, and it all takes place in his, like his buried alive coffin? No. What is it called? I don't know if, is it being looked up? This is great. Ryan... Let's look it up. Ryan Reynolds, Buried Alive. I think it's called Buried. Yeah, Buried. Yeah, I was right. Oh, it's called Buried. Okay. Yeah. Um, Really very, like, terrifying film. I'm not particularly- um, Oh, that came out in 2010. It's, I'm not, I don't get claustrophobic easily, but I remember watching this with my brother and he gets claustrophobic and it really freaked him out because it's all takes place in his- Oh, yeah. That scares me. That fucking scares me. That's how I, and you know, I- this is going to sound so stupid, but when I was in that elevator, I got stuck. One, it was just me and Davis, which thank God. But there's God. no better person to be with stuck in an elevator than Davis. Yeah, because he handled it. He called the fire department and they came in guns a blazing. Um, and it was it was really nice. Well, so it's because you can sit back and let them do it. Well, no, know? my one saving grace, uh, don't underestimate this, people. I had a bottle of water. And for some reason- How long were you in there for? Like 15 minutes. <laughs> That is the stupidest thing I've ever heard. My one saving grace, guys, was I had a bottle of water. I it was, was a so great thirsty. bottle. It was a great bottle Five of water. Five hours I was in there and I drank but it and then look, I peed in it. I'm telling you, one in the elevator had a window so like I could see outside. So when the fire department pulled up, it was great. Here's the scariest thing though, is we were down on the bottom when it got stuck. Then we thought we were, we were cool, right? Doors wouldn't open. Then the elevator shot up to the second floor. So when it shot up, that's when it got fucking scary because if it drops or like the cable snaps or that, that's the shit that's running through my head. Do you remember how sometimes you call me dramatic when I see that like there was a lot of turbulence and I thought the plane was going to go down? Yeah. This is like a much, 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 much less extreme oh, I'm just version. As, I'm just as dramatic as you. This is a much more dramatic version than I would have told about that story. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, I, I mean, I have anxiety and I just, I think about the thing snapping and then me hitting See, I'm the- always worst case scenario. This is a fun fact. I get on a lot of airplanes. We talk about this a lot. A lot. Um, I always, I don't ever put my phone in my purse or in my pocket because I'm typically typically texting you when I get on a flight or something like that. And you know that tiny little sliver of space between the on-ramp and the plane? My brain always automatically goes to like, well, what if I drop my phone down there? Well, you're not going to. What if I drop my password down there? Well, you're not going to. And I and I go through all of these different things of like, what if I drop this down there? And I get so scared of this tiny little sliver while I'm walking up to it and like the anxiety is approaching fast, fast, fast. And I step over it and I'm fine. And I get on the airplane. Speaking of that, I mean, we went to a Halloween horror nights thing and literally my phone fell in that crack on the roller coaster. It it was just, I think we just went to universal just to go to universal. I think that was just when we went for fun. No, no, no. It was a Halloween thing. It was Oh, yeah, a mummy in it. And And literally it fell through the little thing and they had to go underneath the the roller coaster and get it. I thought it was just in the pocket. Uh Uh-uh. Oh. No, 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 no. It fell oh. down on through the floor, mm. which that was crazy. And that, that was like one of the, it was like, how the fuck did that happen? I don't know. And it wasn't broken at all, which nothing. is crazy. Nothing was, nothing was wrong with it. Nope. Just like me in the elevator, I came out unscathed. Surprisingly. Thankfully. Davis wasn't the devil. No. <laughs> Can you believe it? Davis is, we've had a lot of Davis themed things today. And he listens to this podcast every single week. He does Aww. not watch. He does not watch, which uh, if you're listening right now, subscribe, give me five stars. Hey, uh, but you know, he, uh, <laughs> you got to, you got to, but he listens every, uh, every Friday. And it's weird because I'll walk downstairs at like, you know, nine or 10 AM and I'll be like making coffee and I'll hear my voice. I think from- it's imperative to mention that we, Davis lives with us. Yeah. Like he's not he, just like in our house. No, 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 no. I mean, sometimes, but yeah, he, for the most part, he lives with us. Yeah. Sometimes he just shows up unannounced. Right. Um, sure. Yeah. 
And uh, I'll just hear my voice at like 10 a.m. And just like, he'll just be listening to a conversation I had two days ago. Welcome and it's, to my life. It's weird. Every morning. It is weird. Hearing your voice. Oh, oh yeah. Because we talk. Yes. Yeah. We mm -hmm. FaceTime. Mm, got it. I was in love with you. So <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Part-time. Half-time. I hate when you say that. Why? Because it's annoying. <laughs> oh, well. I think that Have brings us- Have we spoken us, about anything of merit in this podcast? No, but that's what this podcast is. It's literally about anything and everything. We I can just so. talk about coffee. We can talk about vegan. We can talk about balaclavas, baklava. We can talk about Davis, Fig, your show, roommates, Valentine's Day. Now you're just doing a little recap. This is a, it's yeah. like a previously. If you on guys my don't want to watch the whole thing, skip to the very end. And uh, you're at the very end right now, so they're just gonna. Only so I tricked you into watching the whole thing. <laughs> Here's a recap of if you just have this shit on while you're doing nothing. <laughs> my favorite. Hold on. My favorite comments on my podcast videos are people that are like, "I don't even watch the video. I just listen to it, but I put it on while I cook, so I don't feel so alone." I do that all the time though. Yeah, no, I feel it. Yeah, I like, feel it hardcore. <laughs> I feel it in my soul. I like when I read shit I can relate to. I just like feeling like I can relate to things. You know what I mean? I like relating. I like to relate to things. I love relating. It's really important. To Anytime me. I can relate, I'm a huge fan. Huge fan. We stand a legend. I do stand a legend. Um, and you know what's crazy is I signed up for Equinox last week. You did. And I've been going to Equinox. Which is funny because when I went to Equinox, when we first met, you made fun of me mercilessly and then made your friends spy on me. Well, I didn't work out like this when we first started dating. Right. But now you have an Equinox membership. Yeah. For, just for off days. Um, but when I walked in to Equinox, I think it was like three days ago, the, you know, cause you have to, you give, you have like a barcode on your phone, uh, and you give it to the guy up front and they scan it. And then they're like, okay, have a nice day. Enjoy your workout. Uh, the guy didn't say anything to me when I walked in, scan my shit. I go up, I work out. I sit in the fucking steam room for 30 minutes. I come out and I'm like sweaty as shit. My face is red. I got like, I'm looking like fucking whatever. Like I just got beat up. And as soon as I'm leaving, the guy's like, yo, love the podcast. Just watch the one with Chris. I'm like, tight. And I, I was like, damn, I hope I like, it was like one of those days, it was in the morning and so I was, I was tired already. I just got done working out and uh, I had my AirPods in and my right ear is fucked up so I can't really hear out of it. And so he starts talking to me like, but I still had music playing and I couldn't really hear what he was saying. And then I had to take it out and be like, what? And then he's like, love the podcast. I was like, oh shit, thank you. I just wanted to make sure I didn't come off like a dick. So guy at Equinox, if you're listening to this, I appreciate you. And if I wasn't so sweaty and it wasn't so cold outside, I would have stayed and we could have talked for a little bit but I had to poop. So I had to rush home. Should we talk about that quickly before we end? Let's go for it. I feel like we end on a high note, you know? <clears throat> okay. Here is here is the morning routine that Travis forgot to mention last time we did his morning routine. He wakes up. <laughs> he makes a nice large cup of Joe Mills and then goes upstairs. <laughs> goes upstairs and then he poops for about an hour every morning. And then he'll make another cup of coffee. And then sometimes he'll poop again for another hour. I don't understand how there is that much poop inside anybody's body because it's not like you eat that much. Like you don't eat a, a ton. When I eat vegan. That's not true. That happens almost every morning. Vegan. <laughs> you have something on your tooth. Oh, it's cinnamon from the coffee. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. I mean, I'm not even going to deny it. I'm not even going to like fight you on this. It's true. You're right. I'm not pooping the whole time. What are you doing in there? Working. It's my office. Yo, I used to get so, yo, my grandpa, check this out. When I was a little kid, he, he used to call it the library, right? And I, obviously I, I didn't understand sarcasm or humor at like five years old. So he'd be like, oh, I'm going to go to the library. And I'd like be like, no, Opa, don't leave. Don't leave. And I like grab him and, and I'd see him walk into the bathroom and just be so fucking confused as to why he called it the library. Baby Travis was really cute. Yeah. Baby with, Travis with was my so mullet. cute. Oh my God. Those photos are adorable. My favorite is when you're dressed up um, in that. I think you went to like some old town, Western, like- that was at Knott's Berry Farm, actually. Oh, and you, you could take you just, a picture in like the, the Western pretty, part. It's pretty cute. And I have the gun, like the little got, fake like, gun. You've got like little like fake chaps on and like a little bandana around. Those were assless neck. chaps. Those were assless Why chaps. Why are you turning this so creepy? <laughs> you did not need to do that. It was it was cute. And then it got really weird. No, I mean, well, people can't see the picture. Unless they can. 
I mean, I talked about shitting on a Power Ranger like two episodes Should ago. Should I so. tweet the picture? <laughs> no. <laughs> God, no. Hmm. Ugh. Only if you insert yourself in it so people don't ask where you are. <laughs> Where's Madeline? She wasn't even alive yet. She was 20. She was 23 when I was like five. I was 23 when you were five. If you insert a photo oh, of yourself I'm now. Yeah, when do you were the five, math. I wasn't even alive yet. I know. How weird is that? Or maybe I was like just popping out. You're being conceived. That's not accurate. I probably was just popping out because you're five years older than me. Yeah. Speaking of the big three zero. Oh, my birthday. Coming up. It's coming up. Coming up. <sighs> I'm excited. It's going to be fun. Been talking to a lot of people about it. I'm kind of nervous. Why are you nervous? And also, why are you doing, gonna be fun. Gonna, I'm kind of nervous. Why am I holding out the ends of my yeah, words? Yeah, are you actually getting nervous right now? Yeah, just thinking about it. Age is just a number, man. I binge just the, I binge some <laughs> really binge morbid things. Shows. I do. I just want to be educated. And so you can spit out fake facts all the time? I don't want to spit out any fucking facts about R. Kelly. Fuck that. That's well, how I feel about that. That's how we're ending the podcast, ladies and gentlemen. Yep. Um, I hope you enjoyed <laughs> it. I hope everyone has a great Valentine's Day tomorrow. Um, Should we end on a high note? What's something fun we can talk about? I love you a lot. And I'm excited that you're home for Valentine's Day. I love you and too. I know everyone listening to this is like, wow, they bicker a lot. But that's just kind of like how we find humor in our relationship. It's not bickering. We just have like, we've, we, we're fun. Yeah, is that fun? It's, Some couples play tennis. We just like verbally. It's verbal tennis. Yeah. Literally, we're playing verbal ping pong. Definitely. It keeps me quick on my feet and I feel like a little intellectual. Like, dee -dee -dee. Even though we're talking about literally nothing. <laughs> That's us. Okay. Yep. Um, I love you. I love you too. Thanks for coming. Absolutely. You strudel. didn't have a choice because I'm driving, but uh, yeah, yeah, we're going right. to go get some food now. Um, okay. Hey, if you guys want merch like this and some sweats and coffee cups and cool phone cases like this, hit fanjoy.co slash ADHD. Uh, once again, limited edition, grab it before they sell out. If you want to become a patron uh, and get the number to the ADHD hotline, call in and leave us messages, ask guests like Madeline questions, go to patreon.com slash Travis Mills. If you're watching this, thank you so much. Uh, subscribe if you haven't already. Leave a comment if you're listening. Thank you so much. Subscribe, rate us five stars. You are what makes this podcast so good. And I'll see you guys next week. Bye. 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 Bye, ASMR.